is a pleasure to welcome Jake from August Burns Red to Mosh Talks. Jake, we were just talking before we got going. How has lockdown been for you in general? Like, has it been like everyone that I'm speaking to is dealing with it in their own way? How has the last couple of months been for you, you and the band? Yeah, I think, uh, you know, it's it's been a roller coaster ride, obviously, for, for everyone. I think it's you know, just um, understanding that the industry uh, has to change. We have to, you know, connect with our fan base in other ways, shapes and forms. And, um, you know, the fact that we're not going to be doing our job, being on the road, you know, uh, I think is a huge wake up call for us. Um, you know, definitely considering, you know, before COVID, I mean, we were touring with Kill Switch Engage and we're releasing our new record, um, Guardians. And, um, you know, that was going to be just a highlight uh, tour for us. And then, COVID, you know, slapped us all in the face and we all went home. And um, I think the initial uh, shake, I think, was difficult for us. But now we're starting to understand, you know, the severity of COVID and how it is changing things and um, trying to just, uh, I guess, you know, invest our time in something that has value instead of uh, sitting here being shook and just uh, waiting for things to change. We're trying to change things on our own, you know, so it's exciting. It's exhilarating. It's exhausting. And it's scary. <laughs> it's all of that. But uh, I'm, I'm, I'm really, I'm trying to make something out of nothing. You know? Yeah, totally. Like I, the thing, I've been talking to bands all the way through lockdown. Like, and something that stands out about August Burns Red is a lot of the people that I've been speaking to have had their album come out either a long while before COVID or during it. But you dropped uh, the latest record like a month before all of this shit really hit the, f the fan. Like, like um, how has it affected the record and the perception of? Um, I, I guess like, you know, it, it was a tough spot for us to be in as a band because, because COVID was just starting at that point. It was just starting to become something that people were talking like, hey, um, tours are going to stop and you know, all of these things are going to happen and it's going to be locked down. And so we were thinking, man, should we postpone the launch of this record guardians and wait until, you know, we can tour on it because that's usually like, generally when you come out with a new album, you want to hit the road, you know? So yeah. we, maybe, maybe we need to postpone it, but the, the lyrical content of that record is really about unity community, um, you know, respecting others, whether they see life the same or not. And, um, and and choosing love and choosing acceptance over judgment or selfish pursuit. And so we really felt like that was what our fan base needed. And that's what I think the music community needed was these encouraging uh, lyrics because that's what we need to survive. We need in this time when things like this happen, it's like, hey, man, we need to put aside our differences, our, our, our belief systems, our, our judgments and come alongside from a human to a human to help nurture one another so that we can survive something like this. And so we decided not to postpone the release and just release the record. And we've gotten an, um, a really amazing response because of that. Um, and we've gotten stories already from our fans that are like, hey, you, you know, my routine is taken away from me. Uh, my, my ways of therapy, whether that's going and working out or uh, you know, going and playing hockey with the boys or whatever it may be uh, is is taken from me. And your lyrics are helping me um, cope or helping me, you know, stay strong in this in this time. You know, so it's it's been very beneficial for us because we know that our music is still doing what we've always wanted to do. And that's strengthen our listeners. Mm, like so what's interesting is like earlier this week i was talking um to lauren from the band sharp tooth um who has a really strong lyrical narrative right uh yeah. and it's i like hearing that you were inspired to write things that were positive in today's world and what i was saying what the conversation that i was having with lauren is the only thing that everyone can agree on at the minute is that it's fractured like 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 every like conversation and just trying to get along as one has been a real struggle in recent years but it, is that what inspired you for this record is to kind of at least be out there putting that message out in such a turbulent time 
Yeah, I don't think that we had an overall um, vision and direction for the lyrical content to to be towards that topic and subject. I think I think we're storytellers, and you know we have we had a lot of stories to tell um, on this record, and it just kind of I guess kind of just molded itself into being a good resource or a tool for that topic for for that discussion, right? That conversation piece. Uh, so there wasn't any real intent in that. And and what I think we're going through right now is a growing pain. Um, and I think that we, we have a lot to learn as society, as uh, as people. And, you know, right now, I know it looks really bad and it is really bad. And there's a lot of hurt and pain happening. But I have hope and faith that um we're gonna choose to do the right thing with that pain and hurt uh that we're gonna choose uh to try to take this and grow from it and um self-reflect and kind of step outside of our boundaries of comfortability um in order and for the sake of love and for our community so so like the the direction of the lyrical content wasn't necessarily to encourage finding a solution to this problem because we didn't really see this actually happening oh yeah um, of course yeah, yeah you know but um but i would agree that we have gotten to this place and uh and just eerie how the lyrical content from our record it really does speak uh to what's hmm. what we're going through so yeah um, yeah. Like, uh, sorry, I, I think that I might have been misconstrued there. What I'm, what I mean was, um, like even, even like political discourse. Like for the last couple of years, it feels like everyone's been at one another. So what, I, what I'm fascinated by by listening to you speak in our interview so far is, um, where does that the the channeling of positivity come from because I really admire that you, you've got such a such a good outlook in such a difficult time. Yeah, I think uh, I mean, <clears throat> I guess to to um, explain this in a in a very uh, man um, love. I, I believe in love. Uh, I believe that um, love is the the tool that we have on this earth that can conquer uh, the the negativity, the the evil, the 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 hurt, the pain, and um, I believe that if we choose love um, every time, or or try at least to choose love, and we choose to forgive, and we choose to not hold on to resentment, um, by doing that, we love ourselves really well, and we can love others uh, better, and so. Um, you know, the positivity that I, that I have is coming from a source of love and understanding of what I, what I'm capable of doing when I choose love, which is loving myself better and loving those around me better in hopes that, um, I'm just a strong believer that love wins. And so if, um, and I would much rather have my faith in love than my faith in a broken government or my faith in a, um, you know, systematic, organization or, or, you know what I mean? Uh, so, you know, ABR has always tried to carry a message of love and positivity and encouragement. And as we grow from boys in a band in, in 2004 to men in, in, in a, a, a musical group at 2020, you know, we have uh, just started to evolve in trying to uh, love better uh, with, with, our music and our lyrical content and our fan base. And so, um, you know, that's just what, that's just what we try to carry as a, as a band. And um, that's what the world needs right now, especially because you said there's political crap going on really heavy yeah. stuff going on in the States right now. It's, it's nasty. I mean, I run a nonprofit called heart support, which is about mental health. And one of my board of uh, directors, um, she's a professional therapist. She's in Minneapolis and she had to evacuate her home because the uh, silent protesting had erupted into um, burning her neighborhood down and, uh, you know, ransacking buildings and riots and all this stuff. And it's just so there's so much hurt and pain happening in people. 
that the only way we're going to be able to help them is to choose to love them where they are, no matter the color of their skin, what they believe in, uh, who they're in love with, what they've done or what's been done to them. Like we need to just choose love. We don't, we can't, we need to put our, ourselves and our best interests uh, or, or, or maybe not our best interests, but the way that we see life and love these people and where they are truly living right now. Um, and, you know, that's again, that's a, a moral and value that August Burns Red has carried uh, for years and continues to do so. And um, so that's why I'm trying to stay positive and I'm trying to, you know, uh, make something out of nothing. And, um, you know, because I can't I can't um, I can't sit here any longer and go, there's, there's a shh, there's a problem. <laughs> Sorry, I have dogs and I love them. <laughs> um, there's a problem in the world and this isn't okay. Well, I guess I'll just wait for my government to fix it. Or I guess somebody else will do it. Or I guess, you know, hopefully the, it'll turn around. Like, no, that's not the place that we live in anymore. We live in a place where if we need something to change, we have to be the ones that change it because the people that we trusted are not trustworthy or they're not equipped. And, um, you know, being in this band, touring the world for 15 years, over 50 different countries, I've seen a lot of uh, change and I've made a lot of change in myself. And I believe that we have the authority within ourselves to make great change if we choose to invest in it. Right. And so um, I just don't want to talk anymore. I think we need to stop talking and I think we need to start acting and I think we need to start acting together. And I think then then we'll see success. Then we'll see uh, transformation and rejuvenation and true change, the change that everybody wants. I mean, you know, media tells us a lot of crap. Um, and I'll tell you, every time I talk about the crap that media is saying to people, they go, well, I don't believe that or I want I, I'm not this or I want this, you know. And it's like, well, well, we can't let other people speak for us anymore. We must speak for ourselves. And the only way people are going to hear us is if we do something, you know? So that's kind of where I'm at um, with all of the chaos happening, you know, and me just being a yeah. guy in a band. I don't want to just be a guy in a band. You know, I want to be, I want to be a human being that cares about other human beings. And, and I want to show people that. And it's that, like you mentioned that we are now eight records in to all things August Burns Red. Like, do you feel like that conviction has only gotten stronger over the years? And just from a from a fan perspective, something that I love about this record is if someone was to say to me, if someone had never heard your band before and said, like, what do they sound like? What should I check out? I'd say, check out Guardians, because it feels like it's a bit of everything that makes August Burns Red great in one spot like uh, do you feel like you have grown as a band both in terms of your your ability to convey your message that you were just talking about but as a band in general like the inspiration in 2020 still burns yeah yeah i, I mean thank you for first off for the kind words about guardians it's uh you know it's taken us obviously yeah it's taken us 15 years to get here um you know, one of the things that that August Burns Red tries to uh, continue to carry is, you know, we want to be leaders of the genre, uh, not followers of the genre. And, mm -hmm. um, you know, not uh, and there are many, many amazing metal bands that we look up to and that inspire us. Uh, but we do spend a lot of time trying to make sure that we continue to carry the root and fundamentals of what makes August Burns Red, August Burns Red, while still expanding into our evolving uh musicianship and and growth in being musicians so i think that guardians is a really really uh aggressive record i feel like there's definitely a lot of undertones of like some of the older um august burns red there and um i think that the song structure is really good um but yeah it's 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 it, i think what we were trying to do is again try to expand and grow but keep those roots and um, yeah, man, I mean, you know, lyrically, we have we have quite a few lyricists in the band. It's not just me. It's um, Brent, Matt, myself, sometimes JB writes, sometimes Dustin writes. Um, so it's really, you know, inspiring for me because, uh, you know, when we when we started uh, introducing other lyricists into the band, like Brent and, and Matt and JB and everything, at first I was like, well, this is kind of my gig, right? You know, like, <laughs> yeah. 
side of the street. But then what I realized was if I'm willing to um, humble myself and 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 say, hey, I'm a, I'm, I'm a part of a team um, and it's like a body. And in order for our body to operate really well, you know, we've got to be willing to work together. I mean, two hands are better than one. And so I had to look at their lyrical content and um, say, look, this is really good material. This is really inspiring to me even. Uh, you know, I see some really great things from some of the songwriting from Matt and Brent. And so uh, because of that, incorporating these guys, we're always we're always full of lyrics. <laughs> we have like over 20 to 30 pieces of lyrics each time we go into the studio. And I have to trim those down to 10, 12. Um, so we always have really great material for the lyric content. Um, and it just pushes us. It continues to push us um, and even inspire each other, you know, and it brings this bond, man. When, when Brent or when Matt writes a lyric about, you know, um, uh, Defender, uh, about his father stepping up for him when he was uh, being attacked through uh, some personal stuff that Matt was going through, um, man, that really spoke to me uh, about a father's love to a son and, and you know, um, knowing Matt's father and their relationship and seeing that, you know, his dad stepped up in like this uh, to defend his his son. Um, that really meant a lot to Matt. And that really spoke to me. And, you know, I'm thinking about, you know, how my father has loved me in the past and what, you know, ways that he's shown me um, that, you know, he's willing to protect me or provide for me and things. And so it's really it's it's this cool um, season for our band every time we come together to really. Uh, we just tend to get a little deeper with our relationship. And I think that that's why we've been, you know, I'm not an original member, but almost uh, we've been the same lineup for, for 15 years, you know? Yeah. And like you, you mentioned there, the, the kind of August Burns Red being like standard bearers of the, of a genre, right? How do you feel about the state of metalcore these days? Because, um, it felt like once upon a time, metalcore bands were all the rage and all anyone spoke about, right? But what has happened over time is certain have stuck it out and thrived and others have fallen off. How do you feel about metalcore as a, as a prospect in 2020? Um, I think, I, I mean, you're definitely right. And I think that music tends to go in waves. Um, yeah. You know, where there's a genre of music that really um, um, just comes shooting out of the water and everybody's excited and attached to it. And it has its moment and it makes its history. And then, um, you know, people move on to, you know, another style of music or like EDM, you know, or yeah, uh, and, and continue to grow on it. But then I tend to see uh, like metalcore that, you know, think uh, musicians and artists uh, came back to that genre and then, you know, worked on it and changed it like they did in the 90s where, you know, you started mm. getting hardcore music and then, you know, then the the metalcore scene started to pop off in America, at least. Um, I don't know what mm. it was like in Europe. I know that Europe metal and American metal are completely two different animals. Um, yeah. And I better say that. <laughs> to say <laughs> that. <laughs> no, you fight, you're on safe ground with me. I live in L.A., but, yeah, I hear you. <laughs> okay, so my girlfriend's from Finland. And, uh, right. you know, we'll, uh my style of music and the music that she uh, listens to and that type of metal is completely just different animals. So, but, you know, I think that um, it just comes in waves, man. And I, I think that metalcore right now is in a good place. I think that we have a lot of really great artists and musicians that are in it for the right reasons that are starting these metal bands um, because of the, the joy and the love of creating metal music. Uh, because when it blew up and it and it exploded, you know, there were a lot of bands that were coming into the genre and starting, but maybe not with the same intent of sticking around or or wanting to make a positive impact in the community. Because, um, you know, these are people that are listening to this music and what we give them uh, can be good and build uh, positivity or it can be bad and build negativity. And so um, I'm thankful that a lot of the bands that are around in the metalcore industry are full of good people that um, that for the most part uh, write good and positive lyrical content, and um, you know is keeping keeping what we have that's very precious to us safe and secure until the next wave 
of a uh, new style or of the genre is birth. You know what I mean? And, and yeah. so it's cool, man. I, I think we're in good grounds. I think, I think we're okay. Right. You know? Yeah. Uh, yeah. I agree. I agree. Yeah. I think it's so, good. Yeah. So, so to finish up this interview, what do you, and you, like, what are the examples of you and your girlfriend listening to shit at home? I, I got to ask now, what type of metal do you listen to and what type of metal does she listen to? Oh man. Okay. I'm trying to remember the band that, uh, that she that she's a, a a huge fan of in Finland, it's a Finnish band. Um, but uh, I, just to tell you what I listen to, like um, I have a friend, his name's Rob Bailey. He just wrote uh, like a heavier metal record. Um, it's like a hardcore metal record. I've been listening to him. I've been listening to Currents. They have a new record out that's really really good. Um, Invent Animate. They've got a new record that just came out that was awesome. Um, I'm trying to think of the Australian band that we, uh, uh, Polar, Polar, uh, um, Polaris. There we go. Polaris. Polaris. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Sorry. Uh, I have so much stuff going in my head right now. Polaris, their, <laughs> their new record is sweet. I mean, um, man, there's just so many, uh, fit for a King. Like, yes, my too, because, you know, I want to support a, I want to support my peers. I want to support my brothers and sisters that, you know, um, Code Orange, you know, like these bands that um, I see as family, I see as equals, a part of my community. I want to support them. Um, and uh, they're, they're all coming out with really good, you know, material right now. And, and it's all really needed for the fact that we can't go to shows. We can't even hang out with our best friends and listen to music uh, at certain times of the week. <laughs> you know what I mean? So I listen to a lot of that. I I'll have to pull up what my girlfriend listens to because it's like yeah. it's like fantasy metal maybe or or yeah i get I, i mate i've been to festivals in mainland europe i know i know the kind of metal you're talking about it's fascinating yeah. how, it's fascinating how region uh makes us love this same thing in such different ways amazing yeah, it is it really is cool and that that i think is just the power of music man like it's so Music has such an amazing way. Uh, it's so intriguing and attracting to us uh, or attractive to us. And, and what it can do, you know, songs can take you back to a specific place and time of your life that was good or it could take you somewhere that was bad. It brings up memories. It, 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 it gets people psyched to go, you know, into an interview or to go on a first date or, you know, maybe there's a song. It's like, hey, baby, you remember we listened to this song? It's the first song we ever listened to together. I mean, it really has the way to uh, to help us um, make moments even more special or make a moment that wasn't special at all, at all special. You know, and like uh, and it speaks to us. It can help us with our mental health and um, get us out of ruts. I mean, it's just it's it's amazing that this is something that we as human beings have and um the gift that it that it gives to people and uh and the lives that it can change it's just unreal man have you been working on anything like final question for this part have you been working on anything away from august burns red in terms of music or writing or anything whatsoever is there, is there anything that you've been been working yes yes uh um i can't really share what it is yet because i i it, um we're going to launch it up in a couple months, but I've been working for the past three months. Basically I wake up at seven in the morning and I don't go to, I don't stop working until about seven at night on this project. And, um, and I just feel like it's what I can do as one human being to impact my community uh, for the, for the better as best as I can um, during this whole, you know, pandemic. So um, I can tell you that, uh, and that's that's, that's, that's totally enough. You can come back in a couple of months' time when you launch it, to. and we'll do this chat again. I would love to, man. Thank you so much for having me, bro. This has been awesome. Like and share this video, and join me on Twitch every Tuesday, Friday, and Saturday for guest hangouts, new music votes, tier lists, band-specific competitions, weekly merch roundups, and much, much more. That's twitch.tv forward slash mosh talks. Find the link in the description below. Don't forget to subscribe to this channel, and I'll see you on notfest.com for all of the latest news, features, and much more from the worlds of rock, metal, and beyond.